Another story in our series about the golden age of the American newspaper in a period of our nation's history fondly remembered as the gay 90s. Now, back in those days, life was a lot more simple and relaxed than it is now. For instance, if you were an ambitious lad who wanted to get ahead in the world, you just started in. Nobody asked about your credits, your work permit, your social security number, or what have you. But they probably had other worries in those days, like, uh, leaky gas lights or runaway horses. Anyway, join us in forgetting our troubles for an hour with our young, ambitious hero, the newspaper copy boy of that gaslight era named, uh, what's that kid's name? Uh, it's Irish, Mulligan, Gulligan. What's your hurry? Haven't got time, Officer Madden. Mr. Crowley's waiting. Well, so am I. So am I. The entire police force is waiting for the verdict. Oh, it's going to be the end of many a career, I'm thinking. Including me own. So I've got just as much right as your boss to know all the latest developments. All right, now. How goes it with our captain, huh? Nothing much against him so far. And there won't be. You mark my words. There won't be. The captain's honor is as pure as new fallen snow. Yes, sir. It's a, it's a frame-up, you know. That's the only way that I can figure it out. Yeah, maybe. Uh, look, I got... If that's not the case, you see, I think maybe the captain is protecting one of his own men. Yes, that's it. Oh, he's a, he's a hard man, right? You know, but he's a just man. I'm telling you, there isn't one man in that entire police department that wouldn't... If he was put to the... Where did that fella go? Did you have to run a headline like that? Huh? You got the chief convicted already. Smoke this fire, son. Let me see the latest. You gonna slant this against him, too? Anytime the grand jury holds a public official into court, they got more than a slant. Gimme. 
Nothing much here, except the DA's case been based on hearsay. Do you mind letting me see for myself? Oh. They make this stick, O'Malley's in a lot of trouble. Jim! Treat it dramatic, DA. Out for blood. Virtue hot on the scent of ice. Give it the works, huh? One thing you gotta learn. People don't buy newspapers to read about success. Every time a hero falls on his face, that makes all the little guys in the world feel that much bigger. Sad though it may be, that's the way it is. Huh, Mrs. Dwyer? Not always, son. There's some of us who still have faith in man and the truth, beauty, and goodness of his works. Noble sentiments, but that's got nothing to do with putting out a newspaper. If you want to be a reporter, you got to record man as he is, no matter how much it hurts or who, even yourself. Now, get on back to City Hall in case Brownie's got something for the afternoon edition. Go on. Yes, sir. Gallagher. Here. Yeah. Pick up a sandwich so Brownie won't lose his place when the trial breaks for lunch. That kid's got the makings of a good reporter, Mr. Twine. I agree. That's why I hate to see him turned into an insensitive machine. Oh, I'm just trying to cushion him against the cynicism that may come from learning that his golden idol may have feet of clay. But that's a little deep for an idealistic sports reporter to understand, so don't even try. Well, Sunday school's over. Back to work. There's no call. How do you do, sir? given to understand, Captain, that you're trying to tell this court that you never had any direct contact with a certain alleged member of the criminal underworld? Object! Self-incrimination. Naturally, a police officer must have contact with the underworld. How else can he do his job? Rephrase your question, Counselor. Be more specific. How's it going? Making them sweat. Would you be kind enough to tell the court what it is you're holding in your hand? Well, it appears to be a bank statement. It's a savings account report, Captain. Now, would you be kind enough to tell the court the name of the bank? The First National Bank. And the name of the depositor. Oh. What is this? I've never had an account at this bank. Just answer the question, Captain. The name of the depositor. Frank O'Malley. Yourself, Captain? Yes, but I've never had an account at this bank. Just answer the question, Captain O'Malley. Yes, it's my name. Now, would you be kind enough to read the total amount of deposits, please? $1,300.56. I do not wish to take up the court's time by asking the defendant the same question concerning copies of these five other savings records, subpoenaed from five other banks. I submit them as evidence and ask that they be marked People's Exhibits A through F. Now, suffice it to say that all are in the name of Frank O'Malley, all are over $1,000, and all have been deposited by the defendant since he became chief of police of this fair city last November. Objection. Objection! I would like to ask the captain how he amassed so much money on his salary in so little time. Objection! Mr. Prosecutor, please. Rules of order, procedure, and evidence, if you please. I respectfully request to recess, Your Honor. We have a right to examine the evidence. This comes to us as a complete surprise. Well, since it is close to the noon hour anyway, this court is recessed until 2 o'clock this afternoon. Here, rush it. I can still make the afternoon deadline.
sir. Tell me, tell me, how goes it at the courthouse, huh? Pretty good. Well, right now, in what way? It's a long story, sir, and I haven't time now. Uh, what you're trying to tell me is that it's bad news for the captain, isn't that it, huh? You can read all the details in an hour, sir, if I never get them to the paper. That's the trouble with you newspapermen, always rushing into print, no matter who it hurts, no matter who's right or wrong. That's not so. Oh, isn't it now? Are you trying to tell me that your newspaper is on the side of the captain? Newspapers don't take sides. All we do is tell the facts. Facts, is it? Well, now, let me tell you that facts can be just as twisted in newspapers as they can in a court of law. Well, don't argue with me about it. If you have a complaint, write a letter to the editor. I... Write a letter to the editor. I'll write something someday. Those bank records are kisses of death. Drop that off at Composing on your way back to City Hall. Tell them to set it up just as Brownie wrote it. Hot off the griddle. We'll run it as an extra. Can't you hold the extra till the defense gets a chance to tell their side? Oh, you know better than that, kid. We gotta strike while the trial's hot. But what if the captain's innocent? Well, then we'll give him a column on page two. Page two? Yeah, that's right. And if he turns out guilty? Oh, then it's front page scareheads that high with pictures. And we double the run. Gallagher. Frank O'Malley and I grew up in this town. We went to school together. He was and he is my friend. If he is hurt, I am hurt. But that has nothing to do with getting out a newspaper. I've got to print the facts as they are. That's the nature of this crummy business. Now get out of here and leave me alone. <laughs> City Hall? You got a nerve. Now, what you thinking, kid? This is police business. You? Police business? Shh. Keep it down, kid. Keep it down. You still running copy? Yeah. The chief's trial, huh? Yeah. And I gotta get back yeah, to... Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's the reporter? Brownie. I heard of him. He's pretty good, huh? The best. Figure you'd like the real story, the inside stuff? Well, what do you mean? Lieutenant Fargus, you're wanted on the stand. wide open. I just got a hot lead from Dan the Dip. Dan the who? Dip. Pickpocket. Used to live on our street. What's he got? The name of the guy who's framing the chief. What'd they put Detective Fergus on for? A friendly witness. That's good, huh? Right Him and the captain been friends for years. You what? This is about a frame? The whole Shh. Truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? I do. Take your full name, please. Henry Edward Fergus. You see him. Occupation? Lieutenant of Detectives, Robbery Division. How long have you been with the force, sir? Eighteen years. Eighteen years, may it please the court. With a record unblemished, with a single suspicion. This pickpocket, is he reliable? Pickpockets get around. Could be here or something. I shall not take the court's valuable time by detailing that record. I'm now introducing it as Defense Exhibit A, fully aware that prosecution is familiar with its contents. How much will it cost? hundred bucks. A hundred? A hundred bucks? Cheap. Get it from Petty Cash. Listen, Petty Cash is Crowley. They don't come any pettier. Tell me, Lieutenant, <clears throat> in the course of your daily contact with Chief O'Malley, to your knowledge, has he ever had any dealings with the underworld? Well, I can't answer that with a simple yes or no. Indeed. And why not? Because if the police didn't maintain some kind of contact with the criminal world, we'd be helpless to maintain law and order. Object. If 
defense's intention is to cast suspicion on the entire police force and thus dissipate the city's case against Captain O'Malley, then I must strongly object to the line defense is taking. I'll consider that objection and rule on it later. Court is recessed for 15 minutes. Where can I find this guy? I'll take you. Oh, no, you don't. You stay out of this. How? I'm in more than you are. Listen, kid, one of these days, you're going to wangle your way into one story too many. You done with that copy yet? Crowley's waiting. Give me another minute, will you? Boy, you're getting as bad as Crowley himself. Don't let it get you down, Frank. You don't know how it is by now. It's the secret sinners that always yell the loudest about sin. I appreciate all you're doing for me, Hank. I really do. Captain O'Malley? Well, uh, hello, Gallagher. I want to wish you luck, sir. Thank you, son. I thought you ought to know the Daily Press is doing its part in finding the truth. Brownie and me got a lead that might do you some good. We're following it up tonight. Sounds like something for the police. It wouldn't be ethical to tell our source and you, sir. Not yet, anyway. Well, you be careful, son. That's not standing in the way of an aspiring young reporter, Hank. Thank you again, lad. Thank you for your trust. Much obliged, sir. Keep the faith. It's too bad more people can't be like that kid. At least wait until a man's been proven guilty. Gallagher. You win, kid. Where do we meet the dip? Be in front of the office at 10 o'clock. I'll be there with a cab. And don't forget the hundred bucks. Surprising how few friends a fella has when he wants some money. Pull up here, driver. That's him. Stay here. I said, stay here. kid wasn't fooling. Who was it? Danny. Danny? No. <laughs> now, I thought the little weasel was true blue. Not me. I had my suspicions when I first saw them talking together. That's why I figured we'd better put a tail on the kid. Well, the little dip has uses anyway. Maybe I should have paid him more. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be needing a carriage, boss. No, I thought he'd turn in. The O'Malley trial's been something of a strain. Give you a lift, Hank? No, I'll, uh... I'll grab a cab somewhere. <laughs> Can't say I blame you very much. Might be a little embarrassing if anybody was to see you and me together long about now, wouldn't it? <laughs> Good night, boys. Good night. 
Hey, it's still early. How about a game of pool? Yeah. You ought to know better than that. No, I think I'll just go home and turn in. The kids! Hold up there! It's the kid who led us to Danny. He hitched the ride on back. He heard us then. Must have. Well, don't just stand there. Get him. The kid gets away. We're all dead. Flush them out. Search your wagon. He ain't back here. He ain't up here. He's got to be. But he ain't. Did you see a kid? Yeah, a kid ran in front of me back there. Where'd he go? I don't know. I didn't pay him no mind. All right, on your way. Let's say we go in the area. No, nah, needle in a haystack. Oh, but Hank, we gotta find a kid. No, no, I, uh, I got a better idea. Thank you. 
need them, Mr. Clancy. Gallagher? I need your telephone is for the paper. Put it on Crowley's tab. 3897 L. you want? No, I have not seen Brownie since 5 o'clock. Have you locked up page one yet? No. Swell, I got a beat for you. Lieutenant Fergus is one of Dutch Max gang. Look, Gallagher, this is another one of your... He's what? One of Dutch Max gang. He's the crooked cop, not O'Malley. I'm not kidding, sir, because they just tried to kill me. Gallagher. Yes, sir? Where are you? I'm at Clancy's pool hall, third. That's no place for a boy your age. You get right back up here. I'll hold the run for 10 minutes. And if that alleged yarn of yours won't check out, so help me. Be right there, sir. Kid of that age in Clancy's pool hall. Understand? It comes down to that. You won't kill me, Mr. Fergus. I have no other choice in the matter. It's a hard world, boy. It's too bad you didn't learn that sooner. I talked to my boss on the telephone about you and Dutch Mac. That's a good try. But it won't work. When Brownie gets back, they'll start putting things together. Without you, they couldn't prove a thing. But if something does happen to me, you'd be blamed. Uh, for an accident? Come off it, boy. You think I can't do it, huh? You think I can't do it? Woo, woo, woo. What's going on there? Move along. Since when is it against the law for a father to punish his sons for breaking the curfew? You defy your old man, will you, huh? I'll show you. I'll lock you up for a month. Sorry, mister. I'm no man to interfere in a family squabble. I've got a couple of youngsters of my own. Whack them a good one for me. Young folks sure get away with murder these days. He's no one. One more peep out of you, and that's it. Come on. making a deal. A deal? How good are you at forgetting things? Not so good, I guess. You think you could forget what you've seen and heard tonight? I'll make it worth your while. Is there anything you'd like to have or do? I can't think of nothing. Money? Uh-uh. Maybe you'd like to go to school someplace. School? Oh, yeah. A fellow needs a good education these days. And you'd go far. Look, I could... I could get you in one of those fine military academies. They tell me the kids get the right horses and they have their own baseball teams with fancy uniforms and their own gloves, even. I don't want to go to school anymore. All right, maybe you'd like to see the world. I could get you a job on a ship. 
a cabin boy. He could learn to be a sea captain. Well, how about that? I don't want to be a sea captain. What's the matter with you? Haven't you got any ambition at all? Yes, sir. Well, what do you want? You name it, anything you want, and you got it. I just want to do what I'm doing now. What? What do you mean, be a copy boy all your life? No, sir. A newspaper man. I offer you the... I ought to know better than to try to reason with a stupid kid like you. Come on. <laughs> When those guns go off, and this poor guy goes down, I don't stick around to ask questions. I leave. And left Gallagher in the cab. And the cab took off just about when I did. Well, that happened over an hour ago. Where you been all the time? Lying low. Lying low? What's that, a new saloon? All right, so I had a quick one for my nerves. You know, those gunmen were shooting at me, too, you know. You dumb clunk. What kind of a reporter are you? Our readers expect to know all the facts. Who, what, where, when. How dare you come back here empty-handed with nothing to show except your miserable little life? Oh, now, wait a minute. Shut up! What I want to know is what happened to Gallagher between the time he called me to hold the run and now that's what I want to know. He was leaving the building when I came in. Yeah? He was with a man. How long ago was that? A little while ago. I'm telling you, that kid's gonna be the death of me yet. I'll give him five more minutes or so help me, he's fired, and this time I mean it. Well, don't stand there like an idiot. If you're too cowardly to get at the facts, then give me something clever. Clever? Do I have to get out this entire paper by myself? All right, if I must, I must. Here's your angle. Take this down. Mystery gunman shoot mystery victim in mystery midnight killing. It was midnight. This is a mystery. All mysteries happen at midnight. All right, you take it from there and make it good, or comes the dawn, you'll be out on the street with Gallagher. <laughs> Mr. Dwyer. Hmm? I'm sorry, I'm still thinking about Gallagher. Did you or did you not cover the International Billiards Championship match tonight between Jake Schaefer and George Slauson? Of course. Well, then let's not leave those pool room bums standing around leaning on their cues. Let's give them some of your immortal words of wit and wisdom, shall we? and the kid. Found them, huh? Good thing. We just about give up. You find them where you figured? What's the difference? He's here, isn't he? What's eating you? So now that we got him, what do we do with him? There ain't much doubt about that, pal. We'd better get the boss. Can't you handle this? Well, I don't know. Yeah, maybe the boss would like to ask the kid a couple of questions or something, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, suppose and I go get him. Yeah. Uh, you and Fergus take the kid on up to the club. Okay.
Fergus? Will you tell me something? What? How did you ever come to be with Dutch Mac? You're a born reporter, sure enough, aren't you? I'm just trying to understand about something. I mean, I think I know why Dutch Mac is what he is. He's a crook. Maybe he was born a crook and never did know right from wrong. But you're different, Mr. Fergus. Yeah. I'm thin and he's fat. You're a policeman, sir. A crooked cop. Always get your facts right, reporter. If you didn't know any better than Dutch Mac, you wouldn't have been a policeman in the first place. Don't you see? You would have been a crook right from the very start. You're looking at the world like everything was black and white. Well, it's not. Nobody can be honest all the time any more than they can be a crook all the time. But aren't we supposed to keep trying? To be honest, I mean? When I was a kid, I wanted to be like you, too. I wanted to be somebody, do some good. So I grew up and became a cop. For a while, everything was fine. Simple, honest, black and white. Then something goes wrong. Maybe I put being important ahead of being good. Or maybe I just felt sorry for myself. Honest but poor, a sucker. I don't know. Except one day Dutch Mac asked me to do him a favor. Just a little thing like turning my back while he kept the saloon open after hours. And there were more favors, bigger bribes, and finally I said, no more. This is where we draw the line. But by that time, I couldn't stop And I couldn't pull out unless I wanted to face scandal and disgrace, so... I just kept going on. Getting in deeper and deeper. That's what you want me to do? Huh? If I'd go to that fine school like you want me to, or go away to sea, then I'd be turning my back just like you did, wouldn't I? I'd always have something on you. And you'd always have something on me. It makes for loyal friendships, I'll say that much. Like you and Dutch Mac? You never heard about honor among thieves? You got a mother, Gallagher? Yes, sir. Face it, boy. If you never came home again, you'd break her heart, wouldn't you? Yes, sir. Now look, time's running out. You throw in with me and there's just a chance I can talk Dutch Mac into seeing things our way. My mother goes to church every morning, Mr. Fergus. She's always told me to live right and be good. She's always said she'd rather see me dead than fall into the ways of sin. Pious talk comes easier than deeds. I'd like to do what's right. But I'm scared. Well, you're not alone, boy. I never had any kids. Just me and my wife. But if I could have had a son, he'd come awful close to what I had in mind. If I was your son, Mr. Fergus, would you be asking me to make a deal? Yourself. Well, it's not easy, Mac. It ought to be obvious, even to you. He doesn't seem to be a very happy little boy, does he? All right, come on, it's rough enough on him. Oh, so that's how it is, huh? gentlemen with simple minds and singleness of purpose. I'm sure they'll give us every cooperation. 
You like to go fishing, little boy? <laughs> Cat's got his tongue, huh? <laughs> really doesn't matter. Everybody knows boys like to fish, so why don't you two gentlemen take him down to the river, huh? Sure, boss. This is a test of loyalty that comes at a very crucial moment. Bear that in mind, gentlemen. Let's go, kid. No, wait a minute. Look, I've been talking with the kid. He's smart. He knows the score. We could use a kid like this, you know what I mean? Well, I know the kind of kid you mean, but he's not one of them. No, he's no different than any other poor kid. Morning will bring him around. Look, let me try. No, drop it, Hank. We can't take the chance. Get him out of here. You know what to do with him. All right, let the kid go. I knew you were breaking up, man, but not this fast. <laughs> now you haven't got anybody on your side. You'll be a hard target to miss at this range, Mac. All right, kid, on your way. Get in the elevator and pull the rope. Anybody makes a move for that kid, Max as good as dead. Might as well go ahead and shoot first. That kid gets loose. We're all as good as dead. All right, come on, on your feet. You two all by the pool table. As soon as that elevator comes back up, we go. Go? Where? City Hall. Where else this time of night? That's what?
the gun. You're under arrest. Gallagher! Mr. Crowley! Am I glad to see you? Glad to see you too, kid. You're all right, aren't you? Still in one piece, lad. Easy, fellas. Let him have some air. Gosh, how'd you know where I was? We didn't. We guessed. Got to putting two and two together. I checked with the cabbie, found out you weren't with him. I was sure I saw you leaving the lobby with a man, and I figured that... That was Lieutenant Fergus. I figured something wasn't right. So we called the cops. Somebody figured they better check Dutch Mac's hangout. And here we are. Mr. Fergus, you're wounded. Too bad this is bad shots. I want to thank you, sir, for getting me out of there. It's the other way around, lad. I'm thanking you for getting me out. The lad's got quite a story for the morning papers, Crawley. Don't let him get away. Perish the thought, Lieutenant. Why, uh, I was even thinking of raising the lad's pay, uh, 25 cents a week. 25, 25 cents? cents? All right, all right, then, uh, 50 cents. Mr. Crowley, would you like an exclusive on how Judge Mack just lost his stranglehold on City Hall? Would I like an exclusive? <laughs> Let's not stand around here snapping at flies. Come on. Like many boys at that time, Gallagher was addicted to reading blood and thunder dime novels. An addiction, of course, that's supposed to lead to a life of crime. Well, as a matter of fact, on our next program, it does. Right into the criminal activity of a notorious bank robber and gunman. This can't be Gallagher. Yet on our next program, something seems to change the curious copy boy. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I was so busy working, I didn't see you coming up. In fact, when this safe-cracking, fast-gun fugitive appears, nothing's the same. It just so happens last week I seen Zip White in the First National Bank. Son, please, save your breath. If I told you once, I told you a hundred times, I'm paying you to be a copy boy, not a reporter. All I said was that I don't want to have anything to do with Mr. Zip Wyatt until he is behind bars or dead. Cops afraid to make arrests, reporters afraid to follow leads? Boy, what's the matter with your generation? That's impossible. I'll be right down. Gallagher's been in jail all night for armed robbery. Gallagher! 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 That's Gallagher! Gallagher! Running down the street after another news beat. Gallagher! Gallagher! Wearing out his shoes, nosing around for who? What?